he has done. He certainly has had a team in supporting him and pulling this together. But in everyone that I speak to about these events over the course of the past few days, they say, I wish I had this when I was in high school. I imagine what the impact is going to be on these students. Mr. Gorman's been here for a couple of years at Netmuck Regional, and in that time, he's taken our kids to uh, Kennedy uh, Space Station, he's taken them to Finland, and really he takes them on a learning adventure every single day. So we've been fortunate to have him. He's uh, coordinated this, found the funding, developed partnerships, and here we are in the midst of a three-day focus on innovation where we have students, teachers, community members, and folks coming together. Uh, in addition to all that work, he also was just recognized as Central Mass uh, Science Teacher of the Year, so I wanted to offer him a round of applause. The strength of this school and people who are here every day, our students and our phenomenal teachers, and Mr. Gorman certainly uh, deserves to be highlighted as a really important member of that staff. So Jim, I'm going to hand it over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. This has been a great few days. We've had a about 80 high school students here Thursday, Friday from New Jersey, from Northbridge, from Nipmuc, kind of experiencing, working together. And I thank the presenters for coming um, to help inspire them that they can do um, amazing things. And I want to hand it off to um, our keynote speaker today who um, helped develop the first fully implantable artificial heart. That's not amazing feat. Um, I don't know what is, so <laughs> here is Richard Rogers. Well, let me just point out something about the Artificial Heart Project. I was part of that, and like any big project, there's a lot of people involved. And I had a piece of that as your role in something as well as uh, the fact that it takes more than one person to create a heart or to go to the moon or to achieve some, some new thing in any field. So, uh, and the teamwork and the, the team is important and all that. So who am I? And um, usually people like to answer that question starting off by what job they have currently or what their career is. And so I'll start with that. And I'm vice president of engineering at a company called Primo Medical Group. And we do, um, we're a medical device contract manufacturer and developer. So we have companies from tiny startups to giants of the world, Medtronic or Boston Scientific or someone come to us, and we help them develop a new product, manufacture the product, um, make sure it can meet all the regulatory requirements. We produce it, ship it to where they need to go, and that sort of thing. What, from on a personal level, what that means to me besides having an impact on people directly in medical device, it also is just so cool because everyone walking in the door is doing something different. You're always seeing an idea that no one else has done before. Something that uh, is a little bit different, but clever, or oh, no one's ever treated someone this way. No one's ever solved that problem this way before. And we get to be part of that. At the very least see it, Sometimes we get involved, sometimes we help them bring it along, sometimes we help them just get to the point of refining it enough they can go off and get the funding they need to develop the product. So it's, it's very cool that way. On a personal level, which is more important to me, I love problem solving, I love resolving, you know, taking all that knowledge you've, you've run into in your career and your life and putting it together and MacGyvering the solution out of it, if you know what that word means. Um, for some of us who some of us, some some of us, of us do and some of us not. But uh, it means taking every little bit of knowledge you have from somewhere and putting it together in a way to help solve that unique problem. And that's, that's part of what engineering is all about. And on a much more personal level, and even more important to me, is um, I've had a fantastic uh, marriage with a fantastic woman over 39 years, three kids, and We've had a total of six grandkids. Wow. And that, for me, is the single most important part of my life. And then everything else builds into that and adds to that and brings it on. And that's, that's part of what you want to think about as you move along in your career. What's important to you? And we'll talk about that a bit. But what I want to talk about today is, in particular, is you're on the verge of starting a path in engineering or science or technology or it could be the arts, or, or law, or anything that's related to your future. 
And they're all, all those paths are going to be similar in some way in the sense that you're going to be experiencing things that no one has ever experienced before. And though many of the things you run into are very similar to what people have run into before, the challenge, the types of challenges you're going to see are going to be like the types of challenges I saw or other people 100 years or 1,000 years before I saw. But they're in a new light, there are new areas, there are new concerns and things like that. And how do you deal with that? How do you adjust to it? And how do you get a path that you think is going to be worthwhile to you? And that's really important. And impacting the people around you, which is even more important. So let's talk about that. So first, I want to congratulate you. Because you're taking, just being involved in something like this shows you're already ahead of the curve. You've taken, you, you haven't just been taking courses, and I've checked off the box, I did all this neat stuff, but you said, hey, I want to go a little more. I want a challenge that brings me into the future, whether it's related to this conference or to, uh, to other areas that you're interested in, whether it's CAD design or it's solving how do you get to the moon again or how do you live on Mars or, or how do you solve pollution issues or whatever it is. You've chosen to make that step which should put you way ahead of the curve of everyone else. So you're the people who will be the drivers of the future, literally. And everyone else will be going, well, I better do what she said, because that's really clever, you know, or he's the guy to follow or something like that. So good for you. I mean, seriously. I need a, a, every way I can. This is an incredible time we live in. The, the fact that technology has blossomed in every way imaginable, it's far beyond anyone really predicted would be happening today. When I was your age, it was a marvelous time. And I saw the beginnings of the space program, and I watched on TV as the first people walked on the moon, uh, undersea exploration happening around me. It was incredible. But what is happening today is just unbelievable. So you have an opportunity to be involved in facets of things that people used to read about and imagine someday would be a thousand years, a hundred years in the future, and you're doing it today. So it's really incredible. Same way, though, <coughs> there are unique challenges that you have to face, like every generation before you has had to face. If you think the generations before, the World War, the previous World War, uh, pollution issues, what happens with nuclear prol proliferation, or as simple as how do I feed my population, or how do I deal with a natural disaster, and, and every generation's had their challenges. It's always the young students coming up who end up dealing with that, ultimately. And we'll talk about that a little bit. So, but it's a unique opportunity, and you can make it this future literally what you want. That sounds cliche, but it's not. It's the way it really works. So, how many of you, who are not about my age, uh, know where that picture came from? Apollo 8? I'm sorry? Apollo 8. Apollo 8. What was Apollo 8? Uh, the first time they went to the moon. It's the first time people went to the moon, actually, and, and went around the moon. Now, what is that? Now, I, I am stating that that picture inspired an entire generation. In my mind, that picture is the single most important picture probably ever taken in the history of mankind. And how can I say that when seven months after that picture was taken, Neil Armstrong stepped on the moon? You'd think that'd be pretty darn special. And it was, right? The picture of the first patient saved from, um, from polio uh, or the first time that people flew, the Wright Brothers flight, or you could pick a thousands and thousands of ideas, but I say that's the most important picture. And I'll tell you why. When, <clears throat> at the time this was happening, the entire country and the whole world was focused on getting to the moon. That became the big challenge. And it caused a massive amount of technology being developed in an extremely short period of time. And everyone was all into it. And <clears throat> The U.S. was competing with the Soviet Union, and, you know, it was this big race going on. At the end of the day, it was proving to ourselves what we could achieve, which was unbelievable in the course of mankind to get there. 
But as soon as that picture was taken, it changed the entire focus of mankind. What does it show? In the background, a little blue dot with some white clouds on it. And that's where every single person who ever lived grew up. For all of history, four and a half billion years, that's all the life we know of in the entire universe, right? All of us depend on that. Below it is this moonscape. No air, no water, bleak, not inviting to life. Not that you couldn't live there if you had enough things backing you up, but it's not the same as that little blue dot in the background. <coughs> At the time that picture was taken, it was standard on network TV, late night comedy shows, Johnny Carson, if you ever heard the name, would make jokes about how pollution was so bad you could walk across Lake Erie, right? I mean, literally. Yeah. And he was, and the comedians were making this like, hey people, knock, 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 do you, you realize what's going on here, how bad things are getting? That there is the starvation in many parts of the world, pollution's bad, the smog in L.A. was a joke. You couldn't see the mountains, you know, from the, from the ocean and things like that. And people saw that picture, and, and, and a group of people started going, wait a minute. Oh, my God, look at that. That put it in perspective. It's really small. We can't just jump on a bus and go to the moon and live there and, and give up on all this. We've got to do something about it. So in reality, that picture not only woke up a generation, and it wasn't like it was the only thing that did it but it kind of gave a focal point for it. And in spite of the fact that people were still excited about getting to the moon and landing on that thing, it immediately changed the thought process. So even though they were, they were paid for and planned all the way through Apollo 20, after the first couple landings, people went, we did that, done that, let's work on this problem. And it was stopped at Apollo 17 and became a whole different focus. Which group of people were influenced, influenced the most by that picture? It wasn't the 60-year-olds and the 50-year-olds. It wasn't the people in government. It was students. It's always the students. Because the students are the ones who are at that unique point where you've gotten to the, you've gotten to the point where you can see enough about the world to understand what's going on you believe in where it can go, and you're not held back by all the hardcore institutional beliefs that say, well, how do I fix a problem this big? Because I know all the things that can get in the way that the older generation's running into every day of their lives. And you're going, who cares about that? I could have solved this. Let's focus on that. So what's happening today? Today, when I was a kid, they said someday by the year 2000, there'll be solar panels in every roof, right? Well, it didn't happen that quick. It's happening now, though. You can't walk. My, my daughter, my daughter's husband, he's, he puts in solar fields. He's one of the electricians working in solar fields. Every time he turns around, there's another one popping up somewhere. It's incredible how much power we're getting out of that now. That, you know, there's, uh, there are changes in genetic medicine in order to solve uh, to, to resolve diseases. There's developed robotics, gene therapy, and uh, medical devices to let people get out of, people who are paralyzed can start to walk. There's solutions to how we can be more energy efficient and so on, right? So all that came from the idea that, hey, students said, wait a minute, I bet you I can do that, and didn't stop themselves. And so you're in that position, and you can do that. It's just a question of deciding which part of it you're going to do. Which means then, as much as that one picture defines a generation in my mind, I don't think there's going to be one picture that will define your generation. And that's not bad. It's only because there's so much you guys are doing that there's going to be gene therapy to, like that picture there, two par two rockets from a Falcon launch taking off, helping something get into orbit, and coming down landing, sticking the landing right next to each other like it was meant to be, right? That was, 
Well, I grew up, every science fiction story I read as a kid, and I read everything, said, oh, naturally a rock will take off and go to the moon and come back and land again, of course, right? Well, no one achieved that until Elon Musk said, hey, we should do that, right? He didn't know how to do it. The people who worked on it didn't know how to do it, but they figured it out. You know, and that's the kind of thing you're going to do. Whether it's pollution issues and, and climate change or med device or solar or gene therapy or whatever it is, there's going to be thousands of pictures that I think a collage will define what you guys are capable of and what you've achieved. So your kids are going to how long ago, oh my God, look at everything you did. Then they're going to talk to you about the stuff you didn't do. <laughs> and they're going to go off and solve that problem. So you've got to help lead them on the way. So the question is, though, how do you get there? What do you have to be doing right now to be prepared for that so you're ready for it? And one of the first things is, all the way through school, grammar school, elementary, and beginnings of high school, you were told, oh, this year you take in math one, and you take biology, and then you take you know, literature, a little bit of history, next year you're going to do this, and you take the courses, and you check off the boxes. Okay, that's fine. You're stepping into a time in your lives, and you've got to go, oh, wait a minute. I can't just, I'm not just taking courses. I'm going to be preparing myself for my career. So a great example of that, we were talking about, um, uh, with Ms. Cole, about CAD work people doing CAD design. One of the things I see, students coming in who, new grads, did a great job, came out of Wentworth or WPI or you name the school, it doesn't matter. New mechanical engineering graduate, they're coming in to interview for a job. And I go, great, do you have experience with SOLIDWORKS, for example? And they go, yeah, oh yeah, I did this project, did a great job, we did all these things, wonderful. Right, give them a try. And what happens? They took the course, they checked off the box, they did it, they did a little bit of it, and figured that's enough. They didn't think about the fact that I need it as a tool in my career to get good at so I can just use it like anything else, like I can pick up my phone and do any app on my phone because I use it every day, right? So they sit down and I go, okay, I understand you got a lot to learn, that's fine. Let's design a little fixture to hold this part because someone's going to be gluing these things together in our clean room to assemble it. I need you to hold, you know, to hold these parts together. And they go, I don't know. I have no idea where to begin. And <clears throat> because they haven't thought about how to use the tool, not only as a tool, but also how it's part of the whole design process. Just as you get through into college, they're going to tell you, depending on the college, Either it's going to be, this is the program, and that works great for some people. They, um, not, like, for example, RPI. Traditionally, they go, I got a program for you. Take this program, four years later, you're going to graduate. And there's a handful of courses that you can take as electives.